You're watching an episode of Blacklist Builds, and in today's episode, we're installing the crank pulley from CTS Turbo. Step one, we have to remove the front bumper. Normally whenever I take off the bumper, I take out the headlights only because it's easier for me to gain access to the 10 millimeter bolt holding this portion of the bumper. If you prefer the standard way, go ahead. But for me personally, I just like to take a T25 Torx bit. And if you can see that rusty screw, what I'm gonna do is just loosen that slightly so the headlight can slide forward. Also going to loosen this screw as well. Next, loosen up this screw. So this method is also beneficial too if you're unable to jack up your car but you need to take off the front bumper. Also disconnect the wiring harness for the headlights and these headlights should pop out easily. With the headlight removed, you can easily access this 10 millimeter bolt. In order to remove the passenger headlight, you just loosen up the one two, three bolts, remove this top bolt, disconnect the headlight harness, and you slide the headlight out. So like the driver's side, you have much easier access to the 10 millimeter bolt. So if you prefer the traditional method, you would have to peel back this wheel liner, turn the wheel so you can fit an extension that reaches up to this point. So that's a lot of distance you have to cover in a very tight space. And the angle in which you have to feed your extension to reach this bolt right over here is also very, very annoying. Remove these two top screws right here and right over here. So on your stock S4, you're gonna have a plastic belly pin that you have to remove. In this case, I have a aluminum one. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the hardware to remove this belly pan. So there are two screws you have to remove on the fender liner. I'm missing a portion of mine, so I'm just gonna gloss over this real quick. There's a screw right here that you have to remove and this screw as well. As you're removing your front bumper, make sure to disconnect your fog light harness. Next, you wanna remove the duct. So in total, there are three bolts holding the radiator support on each side. There is a top one right there, right here, and right there. So we need a bolt long enough to replace the one of the corners of the radiator support. So the front radiator support can slide towards us. So this is the OEM radiator support bolt. Looks like it's a M10 by 1.5 thread. And let's just double check, make sure we have the right bolt. So this is going in easily as well. And if you wanna pick up one of these thread checkers, I'll leave a link in the description down below. Super useful. So the top one is directly in this hole, right there. And the third one is just to the side of the one that we just removed. When you're taking out this bolt, where I have my ratchet connected, just be careful of the hard line. I'm using a swivel extension to just make sure that I have a little bit of clearance. After installing the two extended radiator support bolts, remove the rest of the radiator support bolts and then take a screwdriver, flathead, lift up this clip and disconnect this hose. Take out these two screws. After pulling back the front radiator support, you should have a little bit more room to work with. Before I remove the crank pulley, which is located right here, I'm gonna go ahead and run the serpentine belt around. That way when I'm unscrewing the bolts holding the crank pulley onto the engine, I'll have some tension so the pulley doesn't move about. As you can see, you can see some thread on that idler pulley. I loosened it up a little bit so I can squeeze by the idler pulley for the supercharger and put the serpentine belt where it needs to go. So where that red wrench is, is where the tensioner is. And I'm gonna go ahead and push down to relieve some of the tension so I can wrap the belt around the alternator back over there. I used a paint marker to mark off the top of the pulley when we installed the new pulley. 
the offset hole is a little bit easier to line up. This is my mirror setup. I can sort of see what's going on, line it up a little bit easier than without it. So I had some difficulty removing the lower crank pulley. So I took off the water pump. I used a pry bar, making sure that the pry bar doesn't make contact with any sort of pulleys or tensioner. And now it is loose. There's one hole that's offset by one millimeter. So I went ahead and marked that hole off. I also marked off the CTS one. There's a little line. So I used a paint marker. I marked off the spot where the crank pulley was at top dead center. That way it's a little bit easier to install the pulley. I'm gonna use my Dremel and cut away at that tab about three, four millimeters. So there's enough clearance for the pulley. All right, so I feel comfortable with that amount of material taken away and I took some compressed air and I cleaned up the area because I don't want aluminum shavings all over the engine bay. I'm going to install the bolts in a start pattern and I'm going to add one bolt at a time, torquing it down as I go. That way I don't lose track of which bolts I have torqued down. As you're installing the lower crank pulley, I just put the belt around it first. So using a mirror, you can see that the holes for the pulley line up. So just install your new bolts with some Loctite. So I just ran the car, V-belt looks good, everything's spinning. Uh, I just forgot to tighten down the bolts for the water pulleys, so I'm gonna tighten those down. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm going to place the headlights back, put the bumper back, button everything back up, and I'm gonna bring this car to Serge's shop, AKA DT Performance, and I'll see you guys there.